Let's hit another point, which is important mm -hmm. is the fact that the bile has some antimicrobial properties and yes. now all these estrogen dominance issues you're hitting on, you're hitting on the low mm -hmm. fat, you're hitting on maybe the, the no gallbladder. Yep. It makes sense why we see so many women, for example, that have had their gallbladders removed. They have massive, massive gut infections. Yep. Correct. And so bile is antimicrobial. And so it's going to make it harder for bugs to grow in the small intestinal tract. And so just having good biliary output, it's going to act like antimicrobials and make it harder for these bugs and dysbiosis to grow. So having good fats in there, going to stimulate good bile stimulation and flow. And that bile flow is going to help you emulsify and break down the fat. And it's also going to make the environment harder for bugs to grow. So it's definitely a win-win on both sides of the front there. Yeah, you and I don't have any published studies to say, hey, we had 278 patients and, you know, 275 had their gallbladders removed and all 275 had SIBO. We don't have it like published like that, but I know that you would agree clinically what we've seen, you know, combined over the last 10 plus years is that we see tons of SIBO, CFO issues. And a lot of those people have gallbladder issues or they don't have a gallbladder period. So it's definitely, definitely correlated. Yeah, 100%. And it's good to, to look at that and know. I would say next thing we can kind of switch into is cooking our foods. I mean, sometimes um, fermentable uh, carbohydrates, sometimes just the fiber in those foods, the rawness of the foods, the anti-nutrients, lectins, salicylates, phenols uh, can really be irritating to someone's gut if it's already raw. And so sometimes just one cooking those foods can be wonderful. Sometimes even switching to a carnivore diet as long as we can handle the fats and proteins can be great because you're decreasing all those anti-nutrients. Sometimes just really making sure everything's really cooked and steamed and sauteed, or maybe using an Instapot or some kind of a, a method to really help break it down. And then of course, low hanging fruit, like just chewing your food up really well to like almost like an oatmeal, like liquid consistency, making sure you're not overly hydrating with your meal, maybe just a couple ounces of water to get some pills down, but that's it. You're hydrating 10, 15 minutes before two hours after, because water's got a pH of seven, right? And your stomach's a pH of two, two and a half. And you add a whole bunch of seven, there was a bunch of two and a half, you start raising the pH, plus you're diluting all your enzymes and acids, so the potencies drop. So all those things matter. Yeah, here was an interesting thing. I looked at some of the videos and I, I interviewed him on my podcast too, super cool guy, Paul Saladino, who wrote a carnivore book and he talks a lot about carnivore diets. He visited the Hadza tribe and something interesting is he thinks that we're really like over hydrating. Like if you watch these people, these tribal people, obviously they don't have water bottles and they don't have really access to water the way we do, but he would notice they would eat an entire meal with no liquid. And then here yeah. we are in America, you go to the restaurant and they're like, what do you like to drink, sir? And if you're like water, they bring you a freaking huge cup. I mean, it's probably 16, 20 ounces of ice water. It's cold, which I, I don't know. People may debate me on this. I don't know if ice water is necessarily good around meals either. I just feel like no. From an it energetic sits in your stomach longer, it sits in your stomach longer because your stomach's not going to release. If, you, if your internal body temperature is around 99, 98 degrees and you drink a whole bunch of 50 degree water, your body's going to hold that water in the stomach until it gets up to body temperature and then release it. I mean, very simple. Just drink a whole bunch of cold water and you'll feel it sloshing around. Drink room temperature water and you'll feel it move through your body way faster. When you move around five, 10 minutes later, you won't feel the sloshing. Ah, uh, you know, see, just intuitively, I just keep, I just drink room temperature water. Now there are on a really hot day. Yeah. I like some ice water, but just like normally during the office hours, you know, I'm just drinking room temperature water and I feel so much better with it, but yeah. So sorry, I, I got on a little tangent, but I was just it's, saying it's the not a big deal. It's not a big deal. If you do that and drink one drink cold water, just be careful of drinking really cold water right before a meal, because it will take longer to move through. So at least if you're going to do cold water, make sure it's not 10 minutes before a meal.